Okay, if I were to hold on, do this, make that, do that there, uh, do some random line work here, uh, put some squiggles. Aha! Yo, know guys, I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. I fucking knew it. I called it. Now, what are we doing? What's going on, nomads, party people, and strangers everywhere across the internet? My name is V, you know, like the letter. And today we are doing a nomadic review on 13 Reasons Why. Now, to those of you guys that don't have the internet, don't have Netflix, or just have a whole lifestyle of like, why should I even care about certain TV shows? I just live for the moment. I'll just give you guys a bit of a bit of a story about this whole story. Or plot summary, as normal people would say, I'm not normal, but we've been over this. Basically, set in whatever time period that you want, let's just say modern day. A 17-year-old girl by the name of Hannah Baker takes her own life and in the process releases 13 tapes that she made prior to her death to then unravel all of the whole secrets that she held that kind of led up to her demise. But the whole story kind of progresses on the protagonist of a guy by the name of Clay Jensen listening to all of these tapes because apparently he's on them, but he has no idea why as he's uncovering all of the mysteries surrounding his crush, kind of, but not really his girlfriend dying. While also basically finding out all, all these big controversial topics such as slut shaming, cyberbullying, rape, and death. Everybody got that? So from all that kind of stuff, you're just like, wow, a really dark, gritty story. V must really fucking love this. This must be on the top of Pinnacle for anything that he wanted in a story because it's so grounded, so real. It has all the presence you need in an actual story. Plus he has that, you know, is Effie, so he obviously has that whole thing hitting on him because of his position in life. Oh my god, yes, 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 yes. This is gonna be one of the best reviews ever. I'm gonna disappoint everyone and just say this. I hated 13 Reasons Why. Before anyone tries to do their whole argument sort of stuff, place all your complaints aside because I have an, up have an upcoming video after this is released pointing out why I hate this and also pointing out all of the complaints that you might have about why you think I should love this and stuff that I may not understand. With that being said, let me die let me just dissect and analyze everything about the show to its entire T. Now, I already gave you a synopsis of the plot. Thir set 13 tapes made by a 17-year-old. Got my numbers mixed up just a little bit. And basically everyone on this tape has done something to somebody or has basically harmed the person intensely because of actions of someone that already did the thing, didn't do the thing, but ended up doing it anyway, kind of were shitty, but didn't mean to be shitty, all that sort of stuff. But the whole show is basically trying to implement what everyone else kind of forgets about in any sort of educational system. That teen suicide exists. Yes, I get it. Teen suicide exists. Rape exists. People die every day. But the issue is that certain people that have gone through suicide can find this series to be offensive. Hell, I've known people that have gone through suicidal tendencies that read the book and found the whole way it was written and how Sarah Baker's actions were an insult to how they felt. And this is also coming from someone that is someone that wanted to attempt suicide at least, as of this moment in time, 16 collective times. I'm just saying, when it comes to a story like this, it's best to think about every single figure, past, present, and then going on in the future 
to see that you're not going to offend someone that has gone through these motions. So, for just plot purposes, it's not the best. Casting. Casting is actually pretty enjoyable for all the characters that they were trying to pick out. One of my favorite choices of casting would have to be for who they chose for certain different roles that if you wanted me to go through a whole cast synopsis, I'll make a video about that going over which characters I hated and didn't hate due to casting choice. We'll do that if you want to. But it was a pretty good and decent thing that they've done along with executive producer Selena Gomez trying to do that. Everyone was picked out pretty well for what they were basically just casted to do. They did their jobs sublimely well, and it was very well entertaining to see how they dove into said roles. Also, if you're a Riverdale fan, you'll see that Reggie's in this. So anyway, aside from plot and casting, but now let's just focus on the thing that everyone knows I love to talk about most involving a show or a movie, the music. The music, it can go very varied from either pop or just really angry grudge or very underground sound sort of stuff in the pop rock and pop rock genre. And although the fusion works, in certain cases it can't be realistic because there's more than just those three genres and these are teenagers. Sometimes certain teenagers want to listen to other stuff like country or rap music or jazz or bluegrass. There's more than pop and rock and pop rock. And that's what kind of irritated me about how there's no real variation of music. I'm a music whore. I love different sounds. Needless to say, though, let's just go into the whole analyzation diagnosis of the entire show in general of 13 episodes for the first season alone. Because they might make a second one where I'm going to be even more pissed off. I would honestly give 13 reasons why probably... Not my lowest grade, but still very low for me. Of a 4.4 out of 13 and a D plus. What, what, what? Oh, I'm just not gonna wait for people to j just type in hate comments down below, but um. Mentok! Do the thing!